What's up guys, Chris here. In this one, we're going to go ahead and deploy our API to Heroku. So at this point, you have actually created all our endpoints and we can view it in, we can view the documentation here. So let's take it to the live environment. So the way we're going to do it is we are going to actually use GitHub to connect it to Heroku. So I'm going to go and create a repository. So here, I'm going to create a repository. I'm going to give this application like contact Okay, so that's a variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and create repository. And now we need to push to this. So I'm gonna copy these steps here. So if we come back to our application, let me actually close here. So if I do git status, you can see that we don't have a repository here. So we can do git init. That will initialize a git repository. So notice that our .env is not being included. Now you can do you can do git add dot and now we can do git commit minus m then since this is like a whole lot of things so this was oh my goodness so let's say app say add application files all right so now we can bring in our instructions from GitHub, which basically will create, we'll try to initialize, we'll create a readme file, we'll add, we'll commit the readme file, and then we'll push everything to GitHub. Okay, so run that. Once it's done, you can see that it pushes the changes to GitHub. So if we come back here, you can see that all our new changes are here, and our .env is not being included. So now to deploy it to Heroku, I'm going to open up Heroku here. Also, I want to pull up some things. So one is going to be gunicorn. gunicorn python. Another one is going to be Django Heroku. So now, so let me put a PyPy. All right, so we are going to need to install Django Heroku. So this is going to be able to take care of setting up our environment on Heroku. So we need to do install Django Heroku. So ppmf pip env install Django Heroku. Just gonna install that. Then we need gunicorn. So gunicorn basically will be, will give us an HTTP server that our application can run on on Heroku. Cause you know now locally, what we have is basically the dev server that Django gives us. And that's not like fit for, produ for, for production. So. GeneCon is actually like lightweight and it can do the job very well. So we also need to install it here. All right, let's wait for this to install. All right, so you notice that it's trying to install PsychoPG to 2.8.5. So a lot of the time that's gonna cause problems. I'm not quite sure why exactly this happens, but I'm gonna show you like how to solve for that. But for now, let's go ahead and install, install GeneCon. So the error we got previously, basically it's, it's not able to to install to install this package called uh, psychopg2 2.8.5. So let's go to psychopg2 pypy. Psychopg2. But for now, if you look in pip 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 file, you can see that Django Heroku is now included. So we can now install the package it failed to install, which is psychopg2. So it was trying to install 2.8.5, but I found that when you install this, this lower version, it's actually able to work. So here, let's use ppnv to install it. Oh, it's still installing, sorry. Let it finish here. All right, so let me check here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first remove this, and then I'm going to install, I'm going to install 
So I copy G2, 2.7.7. And then I install Django Heroku after. So now that Psycho PGT is installed, now we can install Django Heroku again. Okay, so hopefully it installs this time. So looking here, what we need to do is import it and basically set it up with our application by doing this. So now if we come to settings.py, which is here, we basically are going to import it. And then we can move this one down. Okay, so like here. That will be all for setting up Django Heroku. Now we need to set up G Unicorn. Okay, so what happens is when Heroku is trying to deploy our application, so the deployment goes through phases. Okay, so when it comes to like running the application, it's going to look for a web process. So what we need to do is we need to def to create a proc file. So write proc file like that. So in here, we need to describe what Heroku should do in its build and deployment phases. So let me move it to the root. Okay, should be there. So now, we need to define web process. So web, put a full colon, and here, use G unicorn. So G unicorn. And then you put a file you want it to run. So now, our main application file basically is this wgswsgi.py. So we are going to want it to run contacts api.wsgi. All right. So once we have this, now you can actually run some other things here. For example, there is like a release phase. So release. So in release, you might like want to run like migrations. So if there are new migrations, you migrate them. So you don't go and you don't have to do it manually. So here you can run like Python manage.py make migrations. And then since this is gonna be run in, in, uh, in the remote environment, you can add no input just so it doesn't like prompt for the user for anything. So now, after we run migrations, of course, you know we have to migrate. Okay, so that will do it. So once we have that, now we can push this new code to to GitHub and then see. So git status, let's see. So those we have a profile and then some changes. Now you can add git add dot git commit. Minus M. So maybe now that we are deploying, can put that deploying. Then we can add setup deploy to Heroku. Heroku. All right. So now let's push this code again. All right. So once the push is done, we can actually verify that our new changes are live. So you can see that now we have this proc file. So I'm gonna to go to Heroku. So right here, if you don't have like a Heroku account, basically what you can do is you can come to Heroku, sign up, and then you're going to be given some free apps to start with. So I'm gonna create an app. So now we can give it a name. Let's call it Truly Contacts. <laughs> and forget the names, man. So let's call it Truly Contacts. It should not have uppercase. So looks good. So we just want an app, we don't need a pipeline. So you can use a pipeline for like continuous integration. So, but we need only an app. So create an app. So once the app is created, now you can come to deployment method, click on GitHub. And then if you're, you haven't authenticated your, your Heroku to access GitHub, you can, you're going to find a link to do that. So once you do that, then you're going to be able to find your repository. So the one that I'm looking for now, we called it contact list app. So when I come back here and click contact list app, con so it should be contact list app. So let me search. So it's here, I can click connect and then it's gonna go ahead and connect it. So it's gonna ask me which branches I need to deploy. Yeah, deploy master. Automatic, automatic deployments, okay. So 
So then let's say deploy branch. So actually you can have different versions of your deployment by deploying different GitHub branches, which is pretty cool. And Heroku actually gives you some more things, especially with, with like development. So you saw earlier, there was an option to like create a pipeline. So I'll probably have like a tutorial on how to use those pipelines because I think they are pretty useful when you're working in a team environment. Okay, so let's wait it, let's wait for it to deploy and then we we'll see what we have. Right guys, so once it's done, it's gonna tell us that the app was successfully deployed. Then they give us a, a link to view. So when you click view, so now that you, you see that the API is deployed, everything is live. Our front-end team will be happy with us. Pretty cool. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel for new videos. So subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of content. I'll see you guys in the next series.